Hello and welcome to The Elliot Show. Now outside it's raining a lot and sometimes when I'm bored and it's raining I do two things. I either read or I watch TV or a film. And I was thinking, some books are adapted into TV and film and I wanted to try and figure out which one's better, the book or the film or TV show. And that's what I'm going to be doing in today's video. So let's find out. So first up is Clarkson's Farm by Jeremy Clarkson. So obviously this is a book which is a com compilation of his columns about the farm when it was first being set up and it's good, it's funny at times but do you know what I think that actually the TV show is just so much funnier, better, more entertaining than the book so in this case I think the, the TV show wins. Next is The Cuckoo's Calling, which is a book by Robert Galbraith, better known as J.K. Rowling. And it's a book about a detective who goes and solves crimes of his assistant. And they made a three-part series with this on BBC. And it's just, it's really good. I really like it because it means you can imagine the character of Strike in this book. But I think the description, the length, makes it work in this book and they skip lots of parts in the TV series, which I think isn't great. So, in my opinion, the book wins. Ironically, there is a film and TV show of the Alex Ryder series, but more recently it was an Amazon Prime show of Point Blanc and a few other seasons after that of other books. Now, what I think with them is that they made them a lot more for adults, for a more wider range of an audience but it was more for adults and I don't think that really was the right way to go with something so popular with children especially as these are action-packed they're great and they're so entertaining for kids to read so I think that in this instance again Alex Ryder the book is better than the TV show. Next is another Anthony Horowitz book which is called Magpie Murders which is about a detective or a person in the publishing world who's detecting the murder of an author while also detecting the book that the author's written at the same time. It's so hard to explain until you read it, but it's such a clever book, the way it's set out, and the description, the setting, the plot is just amazing, and you feel really absorbed in the characters in the book. Now, what's good with the TV show is that they are enhanced because you've read the book, but I just think, in this instance, to get your head around the way and the intricacies of writing such a difficult book, I think Magpie Murders as the book form wins. Next is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which is just amazing as a book. And now the BBC have made it due to so much high demand. It's just a fantastic series. Obviously, it's about a girl called Pip Fitzmoby who befriends the boy, the son, the brother of someone who apparently killed someone else in their town in Little Kilton. And they go and solve the murder and try to find out what happens. And I just love it. It's such a good book. It, I loved it so much. It was entertaining. It was just really good. And the series just was amplified by that. I mean, Emma Myers, who plays Pip, just is a really good character. I love that. And Zainik Balfour, Ravi, is just really good as well. And I think they just both merge together and make a really good character. I just think, though, that actually there's more detail in the book and so I think the book wins. Next is The Mysterious Benedict Society by Trenton Lee Stewart, which was made, put on Disney Plus for a while, but now it's been taken down, and basically it's about four children who come together with unique, extraordinary talents and try to stop Mr. Benedict, the main character's evil twin brother, who owns a hypnotic school and is trying to change the world in something called The Emergency. Great description, great everything about this book, but I watched the TV show first, and so I think that kind of started my love of this series because I read, uh, I watched that TV show. And so I think in this instance, the sentimentality goes with the TV show, so the TV show wins. Next is Percy Jackson, which again has two, a uh, film and a TV series, but the more recent one is the TV series, and it's on Disney+, Plus, and... Obviously, this is such an iconic, legendary book from the 21st century, and I read it. I really, really enjoyed it. I laughed at times. It was just a really good book. And when I started watching it, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is so similar to that book. I really enjoyed watching it, but I just think because the book was funny and because 
They couldn't have done that show without this book. I just think the book wins. And finally, for the TV shows, it is Death Comes to Marlowe, or The Marlowe Murder Club, by Robert Foregood, who also made Death in Paradise, which I love. And it's about three women who solve murders in their local town. So very simple, cosy crime. But they made a three-part series out of it. And I just really liked that. I really enjoyed reading it. It was such an exciting thing because they were keep they kept coming twists and I really enjoyed watching it. And it made me encouraged to read the sequel. The first one, the sequel, and now there's a third one which I'm really excited to read. So I think in that case, for me, because I love the book, the book wins. And now onto the movies. We start with a legendary movie, but it's also a legendary book, The Hunger Games, which I loved so, so much. It was one of the best books I've read this year. And it was just so exciting. It was dystopian. It was action packed. There was mystery, betrayal. It was everything you want from a book. And the movie was really good as well. It made you envisage everything in that almost doom ridden, destructive place. And there was action and the characters played their characters really well. And I just felt that it was a really good movie. But because I loved the book so much for everything in it, the description, the plot, everything about it was just great. So I think the mo the book wins. Now, always quite a popular horror writer, but also a person who has popular movies that have been made from their books is Stephen King. And this is Misery, which was a very old fashioned film, 1980s, so a long time ago. But of course, it's about an author who is basically imprisoned by his number one fan who asks him to write a new book. And it all goes hell-ish and, you know, it gets really bad and Basically, it's a really good book. I love the description, the cleverness of the relationship between the reader and the character of Paul Sheldon, and also the fact that it also has excerpts from the book that he's writing in it. But I think the film for me was just a bit like, you know, I like the book when it comes to horror. I'm not going to go anywhere near a film when it comes to horror or psychological thriller. So I think, even though I did watch it, I think I'll stay very safe with my little book. So yeah, the book wins. And perhaps one of the most famous books that inspired a really famous film, Harry Potter, Philosopher's Stone, and the whole series. That I mean, I was first introduced to Harry Potter by the films, which is crazy to think because the books are probably, a, you know, a little bit less scary than the actual film, if you are a young, like, f five, six year old. And I basically read the book and I really enjoyed the book. It was descriptive, it had so much detail in it, and then I kind of saw it for why people said the book was better than the film. And that's why I have the opinion that the book is better than the film. So after that very <laughs> intense debate about what's better, the book or the film or TV show, I think we can kind of come down to the fact that the book is better in many occasions. That's not me being biased, but about all of those different ones, but it is me being biased, but all of those it was all the book, the one majority. But that also got me thinking about books that are turning into film or TV very soon. And so, here's a little list <laughs> in my little book. Um, so, Wicked is coming out in November this year in the UK and around the world. It's being spent into two parts, which I'm interested to see how they make that happen. Amari and the Light Brothers, which is a horror, fantasy, like, you know, book. Um, that's coming out. That's coming out as a film, but we don't know when it's coming out. The amazing book talk book, Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin is coming out, which I loved reading. And so I will be definitely watching the film when it comes out. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond is coming out very soon, but we don't know when it's coming out. Scandal and the Unicorn Thief is another book that I really like by um, A.S. Stedman. And that's also being turned into a film, but we don't know when that's coming out. And finally, Beetle Boy, which is a book by a really good author called M.G. Dennett, is being turned into a series, but again, we don't know when that is being turned into it. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to get the notifications when I upload. Now, a big thing with that is that for a long time, I've been uploading my videos on Saturdays at 10 a.m., and I decided that after a long time, a bit of a debate with myself about what I should do, I have decided that I'm not going to be uploading on Saturdays at 10 a.m. whenever I upload. It's going to be whenever I want to upload. It's going to just be uploaded then and there, which is 
sad, but sometimes there might be a premiere on a particular day when it comes out. But I just wanted to upload when I upload and then I can maybe upload more than one a week, which is definitely going to be helpful because although it's raining outside, there's definitely going to be a lot of really cool summer videos. So stay tuned for those. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.